Okay, everybody, there's going to be a quick romp through Research Data Australia. Um, and I'll just reiterate from earlier talks, this is not the Research Data Commons. It's, it's one small piece which looks at bits of stuff that are in there. It itself is not the Research Data Commons. It's a window into it. It's a window into it, yes. A little viewer. So this is, this is our home page. Get used to this. Okay. Um, <laughs> scroll. It's not my laptop. Okay. Um, as you see, there are several parts to it. Up the top, we've got various menu items and online services, which I'll show you a bit later. Uh, I'm used to a Mac. So when I, when I do my two finger thing, it doesn't work, <laughs> so to speak. Okay, um, so at the top we had the menu bar. Over here on the left, we've got two different groups of er uh, two areas on the page, records by what kind of entities they're describing. So you can see our four kinds of entities there, collections, parties, services and activities, and how many records we have. Um, we all, at the moment don't have a lot in there because our projects are really just ramping up. Uh, but there's enough there to get a good feel for the kind of things we have. Um, down the bottom on the left, records by grouping. Um, and when I mentioned the group element earlier, this is well, actually attribute. Um, this is where it's used. It's used to group records according to whatever group you put into the record. So. Um, at the moment, we're mostly using this to group things by institution, although um, you can see down here, publish my data category. Those are records which have come in through that individual researcher method. Um, they're grouped there together, but really they don't actually have much in common other than that they, the way they got into the, the database. Sorry, I'm a bit slow alien technology. Um, over on the right hand side we have at the top our search box. Um, underneath that it tells us how many things we found with our latest search which in this case is 318 records and it's showing me the first six. Ugh. And down the bottom we see a map um, which has the locations of the first 25 search results. Any, any um, spatial coverage information that was included in those records gets displayed on that map. And um, what's interesting to people of, who design these sort of interfaces is that this right hand panel doesn't go away. So if you selected one of these things and went to that record, the right hand panel would stay the same. Which can be annoying or it can be great depending on where you're up to. I'm going to, once again, um, a tri another tribute to um, TARDIS, <laughs> search for a scabies mic, because I'm pretty sure this record will be there unless something's gone wrong since this morning. Um, I just search for it. The way that the search results are ranked um, depends on where in the record the uh, search terms were found. Uh, but in this case, obviously, it's only one, so it doesn't matter at all. And here is the record in all of its glory. Uh, it's got a title. Um, it's got a type of data set. If we wanted to know what, what that meant, we could use that little eye thing and it would tell us what a data set was. Um, we, we could probably make these help things a little bit better, but this is where we're up to. Um, Here's the about, which has come from the description element. Slow, slow, slow. And there's a big description. Um, here's a URL that goes back to TARDIS itself, back to that detailed metadata record that I showed you this morning. Um, an address, which you probably didn't really need for this record. A whole lot of um, keywords and things. And I guess the, the issue of how these get in there is quite an important one. Um, 
possibly from project proposals in cases where that's available. Um, so this thing here is the um, field of research from the Australian New Zealand Standard Research Classification. And then down the, here we have obviously subject headings. Um, we've got a relationship to a party of TARDIS who owns this record. And we have a link out here to PubMed, some related information, which I'll take a chance and click on. Well, I think this, is, this sort of demonstrates the, the value of, of these kind of aggregated stores because you can see from here um, a huge amount of other information, including pictures. <laughs> Um, and lots of other information. So you could, we're really just a, an aggregation which can get you out into the, the bigger web. And yes, you could get that from TARDIS yourself, of course, but maybe you didn't come in from, from there. So from here you can get back to it. Okay, where was I? Um, so from, from the point of view of Anne's, this record, which we can't see much of due to it being big, um, it supports discovery because it's got a lot of, of lovely keywords in that beautiful long description there. Um, so although this description isn't necessarily describing the data set as I would personally prefer, from a point of view of discovery that's probably not important because there's probably not a single relevant keyword that doesn't appear in this description. Um, so from that point of view discovery is, is really good. It's got its subject headings, it had its field research so that it could be grouped with other similar things. Um, it links through to detailed information ab um, about the data set so that you can, if you want to reuse it, you can go there and get to it, find out more. Um, so it's, it supports all of Anza's goals. Um, navigation, uh, we've got the standard breadcrumb thing up the top here. So we can uh, go back up to collections if we wanted to. Uh, we can sort of click on any links, obviously. Uh, and something I only found when I was doing a, a training session recently, I realised all these headings are also link um, clickable. And if you click on one of these, it, it pastes itself into the subject headings, um, sorry, into the search box and does a search on it. So if I go back over here now, I'll have different stuff, hopefully. Yep, I will have. Um, so uh, those uh, subject headings are all uh, built into the search, linked into the search. And the other thing we have down the bottom, view the complete record. The, the record that's displayed in Research Data Australia is not the full amount of information that you provide to us. It's, it's a subset. Um, a lot of the stuff that's not displayed are some of these dates, for example. Uh, the key is not displayed at the top level. Um, but all of the stuff in this bottom le um, next level down is actually searchable. So if you searched on, say, that key, you would still find the, right, the Research Data Australia page. It's just you wouldn't know why you'd found it um, unless you came through down to this lower level. Uh, the same with all of these identifiers. So this, for example, is the protein data bank identifier for this crystal. Um, we haven't got that displayed on our top page, but if you searched on it, you would still find this page. Uh, and this identifiers area um, is where for the parties in the future, if this was a party, which it's not, um, you'd be putting your NLA in party identifier information in the future. Uh, not now. Well, you could do it now. I won't go there. Uh, so we started at Research Data Australia. We came back down into this um, record within our database, a view of it. Uh, from here, we can also go to the, the RIF CS that's underlying it, the actual XML that, that was supplied to us, um, <coughs> which looks like this, which I'm sure you've all seen before. Um, it's worth saying this XML that you give us, we do not change it, right? So we don't take your information and then do stuff to it. We might choose to display part of it or to give it a different label or something at the presentation layer, but we never, ever, ever go in and actually alter this information that you provide to us. 
Um, so it's exactly as it was provided um, from you to us. It stays that way forever unless you change it. And we can do quite a lot with the maps as well. Um, some of our programmers have uh, really got excited about the ma whole mapping stuff. Uh, so from here, these, these markers can also be cl clicked on. Uh, if you want to, you can see the Great Barrier Reef is a bit heavy, heavily overloaded. Um, you can expand the map, of course, to make it easier to pinpoint the area you're interested in. Click, click, click. Um, you can put your thing on there and move the map around. And I'll choose one just for the point of... I'll choose something, something interesting with a piece of land near it because it's easier to see. Let's go there. And you can see the mouse over um, also told me something about it. I knew I shouldn't have got that Mac. Um, the record itself displays a map. Um, you can change, it looks just like a Google map because it's built on the same technology as that. So you can change sort of the display to look different. You can muck about with them, these scrolling in things. You can look at it in Google Earth if you want to, if you've got it installed. Um, I won't try that. You can, this little thing shows you the context, which can sometimes be helpful if you're thing shows up in the middle of the ocean and you can't really see where it's close to. And these, naviga these red navigating things, um, this square one here shows you that it's the centre of a region. Uh, some of the others were diamonds, those are actual locations. So that's described for you here, it tells you about what kind of place marker it is. Um, so this um, interface obviously is, is a work in progress. Um, we're constantly um, building on it to make it more useful. Uh, but it, again, we're not expecting this to be the sole point of discovery. Uh, it's very important to realise uh, that you can go right back from here, back to the original metadata source where this, all this data came from, which in this case is the Institute of Marine Science. They store it as um, geographic metadata standard. And you can see there's a lot more information here than we've got in our portal. Uh, much more detail of the data itself, um, how it was all collected. There's often uh, lots of rights information, keywords, we haven't got all of those. And, you know, if, it wouldn't be very meaningful to display all those on our site because it, it would just ob obliterate the whole display and you wouldn't be able to sort of see your way through it. Um, lots of legal information. Um, you know, massive, massive amounts of uh, supplemental information and so on. So that's the kind of um, underlying metadata that would be needed if you were interested in reusing this yourself. Um, and it, it also shows pretty clearly that we're not trying to, to take over what these people have already achieved and they've got this whole portal that this is a part of which is very, very well focused on this from a discipline perspective. But you know, marine science is something which is very cross-disciplinary in its nature and so people who, who may be interested in this information may never have heard of the Institute of Marine Science and would never think to look at this portal. Um, so that the uh, purpose of ANS really is to be a, a more cross-disciplinary finding tool, I guess. And the other bit I was going to show you... Back. Um, ANS Online Services that you get to at the top here. Um, on the left you can see the login. Um, if you're going to be using any of our manual interfaces or if you're going to be a, a data source administrator, um, that's where you would log in and Xiaobin might 
be able to talk to him. I don't know if he's going to talk about that, but certainly he's an expert on this whole issue. Um, if you're using our sandbox, it looks exactly the same as this, except it says sandbox on the top. Um, so the functionality is exactly the same, except no one else can see it but you. Um, we also have some additional search capabilities on this page, which are focused more on what a, a data source administrator would want to do. So instead of looking for stuff by what it's about, here you'd be able to look at it more from an administrative perspective. So you might want to specify your group as Monash and then show me all the Monash services records or something like that. So um, it's a still a bit uh, relatively clumsy level, but it might be useful. Uh, but we also have this far more useful set of web services, um, which are for people among you who are technical, which is I think most of you, um, all of these services are available for you to use to get records in and out of our store and um, any other OAI PMH type stores. Um, so there's quite a lot of pre-organised services here that you can use. Um, search engine index C, no idea what that's for. Um, it's outside my area of expertise. Uh, but certainly there's there's quite a lot of stuff there that you're, is available for anybody to use. Um, so in a nutshell that was uh, Research Data Australia and that's basically all there is to tell you about it. Um, <laughs>